Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Uh, just a short video. This is an edit of one of the live streams I did where we removed the Superbuster chip from one of Stephen Leary's uh, Terrible Fire 8 4000 boards. I used a low melting point solder. It was uh, just something different to show people, but also it kind of mitigates the risk because you have to use less heat for a you know, shorter period of time. What else? What else could be going on here? Well, thinking about the boot process, what's different between what Diagram is doing and what Kickstart is doing? How, how can Diagram boot OK and not give us a yellow screen or some exception or weird behaviour? Um, and I think the answer is Buster. Can't be anything else because Diagram, it's, it's obviously booting some code there. Now, that tells us a number of things straight away. The fact that it boots, the data bus and, and the address bus and everything is fine. If, that, if we had a problem there at all, even perhaps with one of these 245s, if one of these 245s was interfering with the data bus or one of the control signals, it wouldn't even boot Diagram. So that's a clue in its own right that we can boot Diagram. We know the memories are all okay. All 2 meg chip test out all right. All 16 meg fast tests out all right. That gives me some confidence that Bridget over here is not the issue. And the one thing you can do is if you've not got Diagram, you could stick, uh, just stick your uh, SIM in here, see what happens, do you get yellow screen? Um, and then power it off, remove the chip RAM SIM, because that's what this is here, sorry, it might not be obvious. The four SIM slots here are for fast RAM, so you can put up to four, four meg modules in there and get the 16 meg, and that first slot there is for two meg of chip RAM. Incidentally, you can put a, a, four meg, a normal four meg SIM in there, um, if you've not got the right type, and that's something I need to do a bit of research on too, but some, someone watching this might know more about it. The, the type of SIM you put into the chip RAM slot there is pretty important. Uh, it's got to have, and I'm reluctant to say this, but chips on both sides of the SIM. There's something specific about that. It's how it's routed. It's like they're in two separate banks. So if you put a 4 meg SIM in here, that's got chips on one side and chips on the other, typically, not always, but typically, the class is two separate banks. And this is able to access one side, uh, well, half of one side, half of here, and go, you've got two meg. Long story short, if you remove that RAM, you boot with Kickstart, if you get a green screen, that shows that the, this, the half of Bridget that deals with, you know, it's got a lot of bus transceivers and things in there, hasn't it? A bit like this 245s. The half that deals with the chip RAM, you've ruled out as okay. If you've still got a yellow screen after removing that SIM, and booting from Kickstart, that would kind of firmly point to something going on, perhaps with the data bus related to the RAM, perhaps. I mean, it could be an address bus or an issue or anything, really. But, yeah, the fact that you don't get a green screen with that, uh, with the, the chip RAM removed there, would give you that sort of insight, really. But that's not what's happening here. If I remove the chip RAM and boot this with Kickstart, you get a green screen. Only when you stick the SIM back in and it starts to get a bit further into the boot process, past the chip RAM test, that's when we get the yellow screen. So that shows us again a number of things. It shows us that it's booting sufficiently in terms of you know the address and the data bus, they're all okay. We don't get any compromise there. And when I say compromise, I'm talking about things right into that data bus when they shouldn't be. You know, for example, it might be trying to read from the ROM and something else somewhere, a buster might be right into it. That's where you, what you, I would class as a, a bus being compromised. Something's interfering with it, it's stepping out of line, it's speaking when it shouldn't kind of thing and speaking over the ROM in layman's terms. I'll uh, get my captain uh, tape out here and we'll start captain taping off a few things. I haven't got much of this but I think uh, and, and people will tell you this stuff's awful because it contaminates you know you get it mixed with your solder you've then got to spend a while removing it but I'm not too worried about that we will spend some time removing it with some uh, God, it's a bit brittle and breaks look, it just snaps. That bit's all right. Um, yeah, we'll spend some time removing it, cleaning up the sides of the chip, cleaning up the pads. But what I want to do here is the least amount of risk. You know, I want to try and mitigate uh, damaging the, uh, the PCB here. Now, down this side here, we've definitely had corrosion. So, you know, that's a factor as well when you're removing these SMD chips like this from these boards the points where the corrosion's been, you can end up losing pads if you're not careful. So anyway, let's just get a little bit of this uh, on here, and you can just literally trail this. We ain't bothered about 
doing this cleanly, the flux is not really helping that flow, is it? It's like here we've got a problem. Now, my understanding is this stuff is like a bismuth-based uh, solder, I think. Again, post comments if you know more. So it's got a super low melting point. Uh, and it holds that temperature. So, you know, you can heat that to just like it did there. And you'd probably find that that side now is still molten for up to like 20 or 30 seconds. Um, it looks quite scary when you're applying it, this stuff, it really does. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to have enough uh, to do this, but we'll just try. I guess the more I can get around the sides here, the easier this might be. The other added complication is if it doesn't mix very well with the solar that's there, it doesn't have the same effect. I'm trying to avoid I'm just touching that slot there. It doesn't have the uh, effect you want it to if it doesn't, you know, if you don't leave it long enough to, to get right there. Anyway, let's do that. The other thing you can do is you can reuse this as well. If you suck this, the majority of this off with the uh, solder sucker later, you can reuse it at least once, I wouldn't reuse it too many times because obviously it's going to be mixed with all of the solder that's already on there. Now you never know, if I'm lucky, we might not even need hot air to remove this. If I have got enough of this here and it's gone underneath sufficient mixed with the uh, solder that's already there, we might uh, just be okay. It might just be a case of just passing around the chip a few times and then it slides off. I'm not sure that I'm that lucky. So it's, uh, it's going to take a few seconds there to ramp up. See, look at that. That's melt. That's still molten. That it's still molten. That just touching it with that. Look. Can you see that? Sorry, I'm blocking up my hand. You see that? Still molten. That's the advantage with this. Uh, so I think it will make it a bit easier. I think as I heat this up, it will make it a bit easier. It's just going to be messy to clean up. Um, Anyway, let's let's just see see what happens. This could take uh, a few minutes. It's going to start fuming. Look, the flux is going to be burning up here. I need to get one of those extractor uh, fans. I think. All I'm doing with the screwdriver there, by the way, is just trying to push just a little bit, just to a point where I can feel it's you know it's kind of like on the underside of the chip. I'm not forcing it. And I've talked about this before as well. Make sure your bore has got some sort of uh, clearance. Otherwise, you'll at some point when the board gets up to a certain temperature, you'll start melting whatever's below it. Oh, hang on, it's coming off. Look. Yeah, you just got to be super careful because what I don't want to do is lose any pads. Feels like sticking a bit here. Look at that big blob of <laughs> solder there. Come on. It's this, just this corner. There we go, it's coming off, look. Right, so I think what we'll do now is just carefully lift it and flip it. There we go. So, actually, that wasn't bad, was it? That wasn't bad at all. Not too long either. Not very much heat. Uh, we've got some giant blobs there. So you can see what I mean now, the being able to reuse that. Bear in mind it's going to be mixed with some leaded solder, but it will still have the low melting point uh, effect there. Ben uses that low melting point solder there. I guarantee I would have been out that for, at the temperature I was at, 420, I would have been out that for another 10 minutes, I reckon, chip that size. And uh, some you saw some pins stick down here. There would have been a lot of pins like that as, I, as it started to come up. You know, it's because you, you heat one side and then this side's cooling down. So you've got to kind of like go around and round and round and round and round, unless you get a nozzle that is sufficiently large enough to cover the whole thing but then you put in the you know the center of the chip itself it's a risk kind of in my opinion because you you know you're heating it for a long period of time the actual uh, chip body itself so what I'm going to do now is just uh, and again I'm going to be blocking it with my hand here I think is just suck this up 
like that. And I'll clean the desolder pump out afterwards. And then just save that bit. Just because I will be able to get another chip off another board at some point using that. Sorry if I'm blocking it. Well, I'll just get the majority of that out of the way. The remaining stuff that's on there now, I would just uh, start mopping this up. So here's another recommendation for you, actually. I changed to this braid. I used to usually get just like cheap stuff from China that's like, I don't know, it's like two or two pound a roll or something. The same sort of size, the same sort of thickness. It's what is it, about one and a half, uh, two millimeters or something like that, two millimeters in thickness. Um, but this Kenwick stuff, you can get it from uh, Farnell or RS, I think RS Online is where I got this because I got some flux recently with it as well. Because these boards have just consumed so much uh, in the way of flux and braid. Um, I thought I'll try some of this Kenwick stuff. And uh, I think it has uh, a flux core or something. This is a little, because I mean, it says there no clean. So I'm guessing it has a little bit of flux in there. So where normally I'd have to add a load of extra flux there, we might still need to add some. It tends to uh, just work really well. I talked about this before. The reason it's best to go in, say, that way, like that with these pads, is because if you were to look at the left hand side of them, there's a little trace that goes to a wire on the left-hand side. So they have support, they have more physical support from that orientation than they do from, I don't know, that orientation, you know, so, or, or the top way there. So by virtue of going that way, down this, this lot here, if you attach to one of them or one of them's weak and you, you know, pull it, you know, because that heat's going to affect the epoxy and stuff that these are, you know, these pads are stuck down within the factory, you know, the... It's not really epoxy, they're not like stuck down, it's uh, it's a layer isn't it that's epoxied as a whole and then they etch the, the bits that aren't used. Um, but yeah, going in one way is safer than going another. Yeah, that side's looking alright I think. Yeah, so I've just done that side. Just gently, I don't want to again snag the pins and bend them out of place. I think what I'm going to do is just use the helping hands here if we just rotate this around. Uh, and I don't like doing this, I really don't like using these. See these like jaws of death here. We can just carefully stick the chip in there. Uh, and then if we tighten, hang on, god, these things are awful to use, they seriously are. I'm just going to get a little bit of uh, chip quick uh, flux on here. Yeah, so hopefully you can see that. That's looking pretty tidy. Yeah, I think that should be okay to fit into that socket. I don't see any blobs of solder. Just the underside that I didn't really go over. There's probably still a bit of that awful uh, bismuth-based stuff on there. But anyway, so there we go. So that's that one out. So that's a Rev 9 Buster. The one that we've uh, just cleaned the legs up on is a Rev 11. So let's just see what happens. I know what's going to happen now. This is going to work in it, and I'm going to be gutted. Right, let's switch it on. Oh, I'm gutted because it's working. So I do hope you found the video interesting. I'll get some more videos up soon, including some more edits of some of the live streams as well.